All right. Hey, folks. Um, welcome to day three of the, the Core OS face to face. Um, this session is about growing the Fedora Core OS community. A uh, couple of ground rules off the top. Um, it is a face to face, so if you are feeling uh, if you feel comfortable, please keep your video on so we can see your beautiful faces. Uh, please use the raise hand functionality to queue up when you want to respond. And since there is a lot of uh, new faces here from uh, Red Hat and other, way, uh, other parts of the world, um, a short introduction, if you haven't talked before, uh, would be useful. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it off to Dusty and Jason Brooks. Cool. I'll start with a short introduction, and then I'll pass it off to Jason, and then we can kind of dig in. So I'm Dusty Mabe. Uh, I like to consider myself um, very involved in the Fedora Core OS community and uh, also in the Project Atomic community before uh, we kind of brought everybody together for Core OS stuff. Um, I'm very interested in building community. I'm very interested in uh, us, um, you know, having more involvement than just Red Hat. I think that's part of what makes an open source project um, healthy. Uh, so that's, that's more or less it. So this, this is a topic that I'm passionate about. I'll hand it off to Jason Brooks. Hey, I'm Jason Brooks. I work in Red Hat's uh, open source program office. And um, I was uh, involved uh, in Project Atomic before. So I developed a love for RPM OS tree and uh, Run silver blue on my laptop and everything, but uh, yeah, I mean we what we work with pro different projects um, that that Red Hat's invested in and to, to help them be successful, and um, so that that's my interest here is to to help the Fedora Core OS be successful. Gotcha. Thanks, Jason. So we have two options here. I've got this HackMD, and we've got a few. I've got just some a few notes that I've written down in it. Um, one thing we can do is I can kind of run through uh, each point and get an, uh, give an overview, and then we can kind of come back and talk about them. Or I can go through each one and open it up for uh, input on each one. And then also under each section, we can have people say, hey, oh, by the way, um, you know, maybe this one could also be added to this section. Um, so does anybody have a preference on how, you know, which of those two options we go with here? Maybe one at, one at the time. Sorry. Okay, one at a time goes. Um, so what I will do, I'll try to periodically monitor to see if there are any raised hands, um, but I'll just run through them and uh, we'll go from there. So the first thing that I put in this uh, HackMD was the term execution. Um, and this is more or less kind of doing what we've already been doing, but just making sure that we keep a nod to quality. Uh, so for example, um, you know, anytime that we have an issue that pops up where people have to manually go do something to their system, um, you know, and it's an opportunity for them to reevaluate and say, oh, maybe, maybe I should try something else. Um, so one of the things that we can do is keep the community that we already have, right? The users that we already have by keeping them happy. Um, so I think obviously this is about growing the Fedora Core OS community, uh, but if we keep our existing users happy, uh, then they'll talk to other people and bring more people into the fold. I feel like word of mouth is definitely one of those things um, that is undervalued sometimes because, um, you know, Putting things out on Twitter is pretty cheap, and also there's high uh, noise, you know, levels there. So, not always as value as having somebody say, "Yeah, I've been using this for two years, and it's been rock solid." Um, so, just executing there, keeping our nod for quality, all of the efforts for CI that we've been doing, I, you know, just have improved this so much. So. Um, you know, that, that's the first point. I think it's kind of common sense, but I don't think it's worth, uh, or I think it's very much worth stating. Um, the second point I have there is uh, availability and more cloud providers. So obviously if, if we're available anywhere a user wants to use us, uh, that will help us, um, you know, attract more people. 
Um, so I think that one's fairly common sense. I don't see any raised hands right now. Uh, so I'll just continue to run through this. Um, the next one I have is uh, freely available information and resources. One thing that we're not doing right now that we've we've said we want to do, just haven't quite gotten around to it, is kind of having release notes for each of our releases that goes out. I think that will be very valuable um, once we get to a point where we're doing that, just because, you know, how nice is it to go to a page with a nice overview and say, oh, this is exactly when system D got bumped um, and had these new features in it or something like that, right? Um, or, you know, if you happen to be a user and you are using it in a way that nobody else is somehow, um, you know, maybe you're changing your U limit or something like that. I don't know. Um, you can kind of go in and see, oh, in this particular release, uh, this change happened and it might have been, you know, what the experience, the side effect that I'm seeing might be part of that change. Um, so having release notes, um, you know, a little more thought out and written for each release, I think will be really helpful. Um, and then also more comprehensive documentation. I think that goes without saying a little bit is, you know, if a user, you know, starts with Fedora Core OS and um, there's a particular thing that they're trying to do and we have some documentation for it, uh, it, you know, it'll just help keep them in our fold rather than letting them go somewhere else that has better documentation. Um, so I think those two sections are kind of like obvious uh, things that we can do to just help what make us more well-rounded in general. Um, Matt, let's see. Okay, I'm not monitoring the chat. Just let me know if uh, if anything pops up in there that I need to, um, we need to talk about. Uh, okay, the next section that I have is called outreach. Um, so this is something where we're, I don't think we're quite, you know, doing as much as we can right now. Um, so community event coordination, um, one thing that we do is we we submit talks and stuff to conferences where we know other Red Hatters are going to be typically, and you know that we typically go to so DevConf, Red Hat Summit, um, what are the other ones? Flock, things like that. But we we're not as good at submitting talks to other conferences where there aren't as many Red Hatters, and I think this can be kind of. Um, you know, we're, we're staying in our echo chamber a little bit, right? And not kind of reaching out to new people as much. Um, so, you know, fringe conferences, um, it, it, you know, meetups in local, you know, areas where you are, those are opportunities for us to kind of reach out to people who might not know about us. Um, and, you know, that represents an opportunity to me. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and then also, you know, let's not forget about our regular conferences as well. We don't want to just go to those other places. We want to be everywhere pretty much, but we don't have infinite resources either. So we we do need to be strategic, but I, like I said, I do think um, trying to reach out and be in places where we haven't been before is an opportunity for us. Um, the next bullet point I have is uh, kind of working with more upstream projects that want to build on top of Fedora Core OS. Um, so, like, Fedora Core OS provides a really nice base, right? Um, and if other projects build on top of us, then we build our community. So, um, it actually is quite nice from, you know, if you kind of almost look at it like an, from an appliance perspective, right? Fedora Core OS is the base, then another project picks it up and, and builds on top of that. They provide the application, and then it's delivered as an appliance to uh, to you know, users in the community. This this is kind of what OKD is doing. OKD is picking up Fedora Core OS and building on top of it, adding a little sugar, and then it's OpenShift essentially. Um, so uh, the one the one other project that I know of that has picked us up and is using us is Typhoon, um, which is a uh, an upstream Kubernetes um, project uh, slash distribution. Um, so, like, have others tried to do this and had trouble? Um, are there ways in which we can actually promote Fedora Core OS being used in this context? Um, so that is kind of one of those things where, you know, if Fedora Core OS is chosen as the base and the app is a killer app, then, you know, we benefit if they choose us, right? Uh, it's almost like partnering in, you know, you know in the business side of things. 
Uh, so that's one thing. Oh, Clement, yes. Let me uh, see yeah, what Clement um, has to say. Uh, it's more like a thought that while you were talking. Um, so uh, I think I, I, I generally agree with going to more conferences where it's not really related to uh, like our comfort zone, maybe. Uh, but I of, often find difficult to like what type of messaging we should we should give. And I think a nice point is like probably uh, what you just said after as like Fedora as a base, and maybe we go I don't know to WordPress conferences or you know like very specific application, and and we can talk about like yeah you know we we're doing this great great uh, OS that is uh, rock solid and. Uh, maybe that could be valuable into your community or your project or something like that. So uh, maybe something to explore there. Yeah, exactly. If we if we wanted to target specific uh, app platforms or something like that, um, you know, I think that would have a lot of value. I think there was a recent article on Fedora Magazine about you know how you run how you run like a particular software stack. Like if you want to run your matrix.org server, you know, uh, matrix server on Fedora Core OS, here's how to do it, right? And just taking that, making it a conference talk and presenting it at, you know, uh, a conference that's targeted more towards decentralized communication platforms, right? Um, would be an example of something that we could do. And like what you said, actually reaching out specifically and talking to that target audience rather than just kind of saying, here's what Fedora Core OS is at a, at a conference where people, you know, speaking more to the audience rather than just uh, blasting it out there um, and, and not having a targeted approach. Both of them can work, right? <laughs> One probably is a little more effective than the other. Um, okay, uh, Jason. Yeah, you know, on the, uh, on the, messaging point about knowing what, what messaging you know to give when you're giving a talk we could you know produce like a, um, a sample deck that we keep up to date that you know if, if any community member wants to speak about it at a group of any size that could kind of give them a starting off point that's something that the project could maintain to make that easier yep exactly i think um Clement and, and timothy i don't know if you guys already did your talk with openshift tv or not um but yeah it, when uh, when they started putting that together, I had a slide deck that I had prepared for some talks. And guess what? I I started my slide deck based on one that Ben Briard had um, you know given a while back. And you basically just start with something and then mold it into and into what you need it to be for that uh, particular talk. But yeah, if um, having somewhere where these resources are kind of collected together, the source as well as like maybe a final version, like a PDF version of it basically allows people to kind of go through and pick and choose pieces of these previous works. I, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, from an internal Red Hat perspective, the real easy way to share is just put it in a Google Drive. Uh, from, uh, from a community perspective, we might just want to like, you know, make a GitHub repo or something and put, a, put them all in there. Um, so I think that's a good idea, Jason, to kind of pull these presentation resources together. Okay, I don't see any hands raised, so I will continue. Um, okay, the next topic heading that I have is staying in the conversation, um, staying relevant. So, you know, obviously doing more ar more articles about Fedora Core OS uh, in Fedora Magazine, um, opensource.com, they always love you to submit articles there, and I think that's a good place for us to kind of, you know, broaden our horizon a little bit. Um, but, you know, just in general, if you want to do it on your own blog, you know, blog platform anywhere, right, just adding to, um, you know, adding more information and, and kind of putting it out there will help, uh, you know, pull in more people that'll see it. Every once in a while, uh, stuff that I write gets aggregated into like a um, technology short take from from some people and then a lot of people read those newsletters right uh so it all of this helps um i guess we can have a conversation in a minute about what's more strategic right which pieces are are, are there i just kind of made a list of things that aren't necessarily uh ordered in in priority um the next thing i had under there is podcasts 
Um, I've gone on the Linux Unplugged podcast a few times to talk about uh, Fedora Core OS and Project Atomic a while back. Having more representation there or any other podcasts. Um, I feel, feel like podcasts are pretty popular these days and that people are starting them all the time. Um, so there's probably, they're always looking for people to talk. Uh, so if you're willing to talk, I'm sure we can get you on a podcast. Um, and then obviously doing more stuff on social. So we, we, we do have a Twitter profile. I've pretty much just been running that. Um, but, you know, obviously we can do a lot better there. Um, and, and actually do some sort of engagement. So when people like ask questions on Twitter, uh, we can try to make sure um, we point them in the right direction. It's not necessarily support, right? I'm not gonna try to figure out why something's broken for you. But what we can say is, oh, hey, can you ask this question over here where you might get more, you know, more people are looking uh, for, you know, to help you answer these types of questions. Um, so those, those are opportunities for us. And then just as grabbing at strings a little bit, I have a, a topic called indirect progress. Um, so this is like, oh, Does yep, sorry. They Go have a raised hand. Nope. Mike, Mike raise a hand at some point if you want to. Oh, who did? Take a break. Mike, if you want to speak up. Uh, yep. Go ahead. Um, it was about the podcast stuff, but we're so far along now. It's OK. <laughs> we could come back to it maybe at some other point. No worries. Yeah, I'll just finish this, and then we'll come right back to it, Mike, OK? Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't see your hand raised. Um, I'm bad. I'm over here looking at the uh, the the uh, HackMD that's open. It, yeah, you don't have to explain. I totally understand. So. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, this one's quick. Basically, I, I put it under indirect progress, but more or less, you know, periodically we have people come to us and they're like, "Hey, I want to run, um, you know, this obscure application on top of uh, Fedora Core OS, but there's no container for it, right?" Um, and, you know, there's only so much we can do there, but just in general, uh, trying to identify patterns of, of applications that are hard to containerize and help bring them into the containerized fold, it's pretty much what Red Hat's been trying to do for the last, you know, six years or so, uh, is to help get containerize the world. But I wanted to put that in here just because the more things that can run easily in a containerized environment, the more it helps our platform. Like if if a if an application isn't containerized, then we don't necessarily want people running that on Fedora Core OS. It kind of goes against our our model a little bit. Of you know we we kind of have the OS and then you run your applications in containers. Um, so that's kind of an indirect way to to promote Fedora Core OS is to uh, you know make sure things can run in containers. Okay. I'm going to go with the raised hands, and then we'll get back to the podcast. So, Colin. Yeah, just on the container topic, I, I feel like one thing um, we need to like improve in the Fedora community is it's very RPM-centric. You know, like when you want to join Fedora, that's packaging and RPM. And actually, the only way to build a container now is through a rather crazy process of building an RPM and building a module and then building a container out of that. and like. I just don't want to do that, but it's very hard, you know, like it's very hard, but like, I hope, I hope we can go more in that direction in the future. Yeah, that, that one's definitely interesting. Um, yes, that, that one's interesting. And like you said, it is hard as well. I think that's worth its own like hour long meeting probably. Um, does anybody else want to jump in on that before we go to the next raised hand? Looks like Timothy actually wants to jump in on that, and he's also next race hand. So yeah, let's do that. So yeah, when I wrote the the Fedora magazine article with Clement uh, about Matrix on FCOS, uh, we ran into this issue because we uh, we tried to use Fedora provided images, and that did not work well uh, because they are not up to date. They they didn't have the software we needed, and so yeah. So I'm planning on trying to move that forward from the federal side, but uh, having trusted images uh, that we can use outside of the Docker Hub and uh, 
I would say not so greatly maintain and packaged images in the Doc Hub, even from official projects. That would be really important for Federal Cores. So that's definitely a, a topic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you on that. Like part of the problem is also uh like you know uh, existing maintainers of 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 rpms in fedora already have a lot of work and like when you ask them to also maintain a container it kind of compounds on that especially if they weren't planning to use that right so like more or less we we have two possible problems one is the, the need for the applications is being provided somewhere else. So people are already getting these containers from somewhere else. Maybe they're building them themselves, or maybe they're pulling them from somewhere else that they should or should not, right? Maybe they're pulling them all from Docker Hub and they might, maybe shouldn't, um, or maybe they're building them themselves or finding some other trusted place. Um, and, but, or the other alternative is uh, that, you know, like you said, we have to build them out of RPMs. If the RPMs already exist, no big deal, right? Especially if you want to use the container. Um, but if they don't, then you have to do an RP, you know, maintain the RPM and the container. So it, become, it like compounds the maintainer story. And I don't, I feel like we haven't had success so far because we haven't found the right combination of this person wants to maintain the RPM and the container, or this person wants to maintain the RPM and this other person wants to maintain the container. It starts to get to a point where it's a little more unsustainable to uh, to rely on a community for that, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, it's a problem. And, you know, maybe, maybe we identify another repository of trusted containers that we can point to as the Fedora community, right? So we there is UBI, right? But I don't know if there are any particular containers that are built on top of UBI that are the applications, right, that we could point to. Uh, Timothy's shaking his head. I'm interested. <laughs> and Christian also has his hand up, so Christian, I'll, uh, yeah. Christian. Yep. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to jump in right here as well. I think having having containers uh, or yeah, in, in Fedora in general, I think containers aren't really big enough. At least we don't produce them ourselves um, enough. And it's I think that's also a process problem because maintaining a container, an official Fedora container, actually is the same process as maintaining an RPM. You have to be an RPM packager. Um, it's not like you can just decide um, as a community member who isn't a packager, you know, I want to package up a container and publish that as an official Fedora container um, because there is no separate process. You have to go through that RPM uh, package up process first. So maybe that's uh, maybe maybe that can be, um, you know, simplified the process. And also, um, I wanted to note here that there's a few OKD people here and we kind of run into a similar problem there where we want to uh, publish uh, community operators. There isn't really, obviously, we have the Fedora core, uh, the, the base image, but then, yeah, there's virtually no resources other than that um, that you can really use. And also, there's no clear path of how to publish those containers. I, I think it might be easier to, uh, to not use the Fedora registry, but just publish them to Quay or something, but even for things like that, uh, we, we'd have to set up a an organization and some kind of process to, as a team or even as a community, to publish to those uh, registries. I think that would help. Um, even better would be if, if the Fedora uh, uh, container registry would really become a success. I, I don't think it is at this point. Jason. Yeah, I, it's, I, my thoughts went to OpenShift and OKD as well, and uh, there's kind of a, a little bit of a mixture of, of models where, you know, certain core things are coming from RPMs, like your Postgres or your, you know, the different cartridge, or not, not cartridges anymore, but, you know, the things that, um, the, the sort of packages you build on, and then you, the idea is you grab the source from upstream for you know the, the particular application that that's kind of a way where you have some important things that are maintained by the distribution but then 
if the actual you know upstream source can just come from upstream you sort of lighten some of the of the load on having everything packaged up which is different than the way that things are normally done in fedora but you know if if you're not running containers uh, then you have no way you don't have a good way to manage your applications without the rpms or another kind of package but when you do have containers uh it's great they're more manageable if they're based on rpms but if they have to be based on rpms then that creates you know like you say additional friction so there's other things like kind of within our broader ecosystem ways that's that parts of this challenge are being solved and it might help us to um sort of adopt some similar themes and you know make it easier uh because there's a lot of people working on OpenShift, and we can kind of draft off some of that effort as well I definitely agree with that. I mean, so <laughs> I think I think our takeaway from the oh, it looks like Clement Clement has a uh, has a hand up too. R real quick though, Jason, I think one thing that we can take away from this is that you know we kind of have identified a problem of not having the applications available in our sphere um, to kind of solve the problems that our users are having, right? If they want to run containers on Fedora Core OS, they either need to build them themselves or go somewhere else to get them, which, you know, the go somewhere else to get them is, is okay. Um, but in general, we do try to promote people to use trusted content. And um, typically the only thing that we can say is trusted is content that comes from ourselves, right? Um, now we might be able to set up like a side project that is like, oh, containers that are based on Fedora, but might pull source code from upstream or something. But I think what we've identified is the need for a concentrated, uh, you know, session or two just on that topic to see where we can go from there on it. Um, to basically say, our efforts for containerization in Fedora aren't working out. What are what are our options for kind of improving that? Clement? Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to switch a bit the subject yeah, because I I I I see how it can be a pain point, but I don't think it's the major thing that that will allow us to to grow the community. I oh, absolutely. Like yep. It kind of it kind of is like I said. I put it at the bottom uh, as like indirect progress, right? Like, but I think I touched on a nerve because everybody who's gone through this and is trying to like actually pull from the content within Fedora is, has trouble with it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely I agree with you there. Um, but yeah, let's bring it back to um, growing the Fedora Coros community directly. Um, and I think um, probably I'm kind of coming back a bit to the messaging or who we want to talk to. Um, um, one thing that I found interesting with like the article we, we did with Timothy, uh, Timothy on the um, matrix server is that um, I think that there could be a, I think Christian brought, the, brought that like kind of uh, there could be a place where we have like some maybe recipe like ignition recipe where you know you want to deploy a matrix server you want to deploy a WordPress thing and you know we could possibly maintain some of those recipe uh, but we had the comment about like that the ignition recipe actually looks like very complicated and why would you do that when you can use ansible and other stuff so i think there is a we have to kind of tag like have a good idea of who we want to talk because we will have like people that very used to like the traditional way of maintaining uh, an os and like the more traditional tools and we have also people that have made the full switch to uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift. And I don't know. I, I wonder if we should maybe really focus our messaging to the people in between those two worlds. Uh, I'm not sure if, if there are many. Or not. I don't know. Colin, did you want to? Respond to Clement's point or new? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I, I do want to build on. I agree. I think the we are in like a space between, like as you said, between Kubernetes. Like it's like if you want to deploy containers at scale, like that's the dominant platform. But I think there's there's definitely a lot of use cases outside of that, and 
you know, we want to we want to make sure Fedora Quas can can fit in those. Like, you know, like just one example I thought of is like for some people, like you may have like your vault machine that like you know, has all, a lot of secrets on it and you just don't want to have it on like a shared cluster. It's like, you know, this is my, this is my lockbox machine. And that's like kind of where Fedora Quas is a good fit. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's spaces like that, but I mean, it, I think this whole thing really gets into the overlap with, uh, with um, IoT and stuff like that too, but I need to go all into that. Micah? Yeah, I don't have anything for this particular topic, but I want to, give Mike a chance to talk podcast because we we've drifted from that and uh, uh, he's eager, I think. Thank you. Um, so if I could talk about community for a second. Um, uh, so I'm doing community right now for the for the Ceph project right now, as well as RDO and Rook and somewhat with Gluster right now because there are still engineers working on that project. So um, with podcasts, uh, I wanted to offer out because I do have relations specifically also with Linux Unplugged as well. Um, and I have plans to carry out uh, communication there with CentOS. So if you ever need people that could you know, work in that area, let me know um, because I have deep connections in there. Um, along with that, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was you know, producing of media content, specifically with like videos and whatnot. Uh, I wanted to share, you know, as particularly as a, you know, I think it's appropriate with this media. Uh, you can see, for example, with the Ceph community, this isn't perfect, by the way. Um, this is a work in progress, but essentially we produce out 40 videos a month uh, just on what the Ceph community is doing. Um, I'm working on infrastructure for this as a template for open source projects to benefit off of uh, within Red Hat and for the rest of the Osbo team to carry out. So um, I wanted to throw that out there that, you know, stuff like this is available. We just need to know exactly what community stuff you need in order for us to help. But we have so much infrastructure. A lot of these topics, I have to tell you, like we got this down for you all. Um, so as long as the conversation is focused around community, we can definitely help you there. That's really good to know. <laughs> by, by the way, did you say 40 videos? That's correct, yeah. Wow, just for Seth? And we did, and we did uh, about 17 events in 2019 with a pretty small team. So uh, like, we have infrastructure to do all this stuff for you. It's just we need to know what the problems are exactly, and then we need to be able to you know, guide you all and what those problems are. Um, I will admit, just to be honest in this meeting, and you will learn this about me in the future as well, that um, like these package questions, I really think are meant for the people who are maintaining those RPMs probably. I'm not sure if they're in this meeting to begin with, but this is a community meeting, and there are some people here that are taking the time to work with you all. So please be respectful in the future, that's all. Yeah, Mike. Thanks for uh, thanks for kind of giving us a tour there. I think we'll I think we'll definitely try to uh, you know reach out and kind of maybe come up with a strategy um, to see you know what all you're doing. I mean, more video content it would be very nice to have, and we actually do yep. periodically do internal demos um, just for our teams. But a lot of that content can be reused um, publicly. Uh, yeah, there's very we very little of it that can't be. Yeah, everything for like the showing off the use cases of people that are actually using Fedora, uh, telling the stories there and so on. It's a real art. I have to tell you, I admire it within my team. Uh, they could really tell good stories. Like you could tell them a technical feature, they could spin it off for you. I'm only advocating for them in terms of what they could provide here. So anything you could think of, governance, code of conduct, so on. So we'd love to help. Marie. Sure, to uh, further the points uh, that Mike is making. Oh, by the way, I'm Marie Norden. I'm Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I don't think I've been to these meetings yet, but as Mike was saying, in the Ceph community, we actually have 
a, a lot of this stuff in place for the Fedora community already. We're, we're not super strong in the video editing aspect. So if Mike's community can help us with that, great. Um, meanwhile, we do have uh, outlets. I put a bunch of information here because I want to make sure that y'all know what you have access to right now. You have access to all of these things right now. You can ask for swag. You can make an event on Hopin. You can use surveys to figure out you know, what people are doing with CoreOS, et cetera. Um, you can get designs made. So all the different needs that are being talked about here, there is an avenue within Fedora. Now, the mindshare side of Fedora is not quite as staffed, right? Because <laughs> the needs there are sometimes not as necessary as the things that are happening on the Fesco side of Fedora. So if you open a ticket in one of these places and nothing's happening, just send it to me and we can figure out how to make it move forward. So that will happen on occasion, but it doesn't mean that there isn't someone. Often it takes a personal request to somebody, hey, can you work on this? Uh, rather than just kind of throwing it out uh, into the wild. So uh, just wanna make sure you know what is available and if anyone has questions on how to use these resources, I'm available to talk about them more. Yeah, um, specifically on swag, obviously sending uh, swag to our like more dedicated like community members is, is a good way to generate some buzz too. Um, a small example, this wasn't swag, but <laughs> just something as small as creating a, a Fedora badge for an event. So for example, a test day and just handing out badges for people who participate. It's, I don't know. I've been on the other end of that where I'm like, oh, cool, I got a badge. Um, I mean, <laughs> it, it's not, an, it, I, I like it. I think it's a fun way to, uh, to participate and get rewarded, so. Um, so for example, oh, sorry, sorry. Go I was going to follow up with the swag thing. I realized I talked at a turn, uh, but if you wanted to do like a swag groomer, you would um, kind of open a ticket on the design track, say, hey, we want to design something for XYZ product or maybe the other way around. Ask Mindshare first. <laughs> Ask Mindshare first and see if it's cool and then go to the design team, have them make you the art, bring it back and then we just get it printed. And then I would work on like the sweat or the shipping and all of that because it's like some private information and whatnot and we work on gathering that but uh something like that is definitely doable and it honestly wouldn't cost that much probably yeah I, as far as budget goes i know i think josh burke has reached out to some of our team recently in a community meeting about um having some budget for some swag marie who's the right person to talk to if we Josh was kind of working on like a design, you know, for like a, a shirt and a mug or something like that. Who's the right person to reach out to about like saying, hey, what, how does this design look? Um, is that Mo Duffy right. or yeah. your for team? Yeah, Fedora Core West, yeah, it would be Mo Duffy. Okay, cool. Um, Sumatra? Okay, uh, so I just wanted to point out on one thing. Uh, we have done a couple of test weeks uh, sometime back. It would be great to have, I mean, I am all up for supporting you guys on the execution front as much as I can. And um, as Murray has listed out some links here, yeah, you know, classroom is something where we have gotten a lot of contribution contributors contributing from to the project. So I, I would be opening to, you know, having a couple of class classrooms to help people set up or run a couple of tutorials that's already on the docs. So that would help get a lot of traction to the community. So just wanted to put that out there. Nice, thanks so much, Ruth. Yeah, I think that would be very valuable. Um, we've we've definitely run a couple workshops at uh, our conferences, and I think um, we've done them virtual now that COVID's been out. So like, just taking that, reusing that content in a classroom setting would be really useful. Um, Timothy, I think you. Um, you may have ran one recently. When is, oh, I guess no, I guess Dev Comp isn't until a few weeks from now, but they're doing something very similar to that. So you could probably just work with them and redo it in a classroom setting later on to Sumatra.
Okay. Is there anything that we haven't covered? Any other ideas for ways to kind of bring people into the fold um, that we haven't covered in the document or just in conversation already today? Or maybe to add to that, do we have any community members here that have uh, specific pain points or see something uh, we could do better, like anything uh, actionable um, that would fix a real problem for our community folks here? I guess I'll yield to, to Clement. Yeah, I want to complain. <laughs> no, um, I think so. You know, we discussed a, a, a few things. Like, we, like we have like um, possible uh, possibility to get help, and I think we we definitely have like few actions that we can take. I would be curious to to know how can we. Uh, evaluate our progress and what 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 does success looks like for us and how do we know that we're doing a good good job on, on that front or, um, i think it would be nice to you know if we put some effort if we start to do some content and like that, try to have something that tells us that we are on, we are on the good way or if we kind of like doing all, all this but it doesn't really have a, a, an impact so Yeah. Um, <laughs> so obviously anything, any metrics that we can have, right? Like numbers are typically one good way to measure things. Um, and, you know, because uh, there's quantitative and qualitative measurement, right? <laughs> I can tell you that I feel like the community is growing, but I don't have any proof of that. Um, so I know Timothy did some work on the, the DNF count me type stuff for Fedora Core OS specifically. Uh, so that will help us kind of understand if our community is growing in terms of the number of nodes, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily tell us everything because, you know, one user could spin up 10 million nodes and completely, you know, we could have two users, right? Me and that one other person, and we've got 10 million in one nodes. Um, but it does, it, it is a rough, you know, estimate of how strong, um, you know, our community is. One other thing that we could do that we're not doing, um, and I don't necessarily know if it's easy to pull in, is kind of measure our traffic on our mailing list or our discussion boards, um, our GitHub tracker. So those are, heh, sounds like Mike might have uh, have some way to do that already. <laughs> I, I used to do all the stats for the OpenStack Foundation as well. So anything with stats, user survey, all that stuff, it can help with that. Cool. Perfect. Yep. So th that was another way that I thought of that we might be able to get some actual numbers back, right? Um, yeah. I don't know of anything else. I mean, obviously, you just mentioned the survey. That would be kind of you know, just just simply measuring participation in the survey is another number to get. So the survey gives us qualitative information, and the the number of people who respond is a quantitative thing that we could do. Uh, so we're pretty we pretty much can start from scratch and start measuring and just see where the trend goes. Would be my suggestion. Marie. Right. I was going to suggest starting with a community survey. I think that's a, a really good place to start. Um, a starting point, you can start measuring things off of. You can repeat the survey in three or six months and um, that kind of thing. And we can work on making those questions useful and getting some really good um, information out of them before we put that out there. Um, and I think that will inform what you're going to do. But beyond that, I would just suggest like, I think we all know how little resources and time uh, we have because there's a lot going on. So I think something that should be focused on is really um, making the most out of what everyone is doing already. What are y'all doing the best? Do more of that. 
um, and definitely hit those the pain points too. Make sure you're filling the gaps, but we have you know limited time and resources, so definitely want to simplify the process and the the, pr the program that you are trying to write up here. Mike, uh, this is part two. Yeah. So um, while we're talking about surveys, I just like I'm just trying to get this out right now. It is a lot of work around the messaging and whatnot. I have to tell you, as being previously an engineer on the kernel itself, uh, it's a lot of work to deliver this messaging. So um, if I may share um, like an example of what we could do with surveys. Let's see, here we go. I understand this is a preview link, so uh, please don't share this out to people yet. I'm still actually working on in terms of getting this out and the messaging correctly, but you could kind of get an idea of what we do with uh, the user survey with Ceph, and this is for 2020. Oh, that didn't work, huh? That patient I found. Yeah, give me one second. Uh, I'll I'll paste it in the chat. Cool. Jonathan. Uh, I just wanted to highlight something uh, Vipul said in the chat, which was. Uh, we could have like uh, projects for through GStock or outreach and that that like improves the profile of FCOS across like a bunch of communities because a lot of people look at that do look, look at those projects and that's a cool idea. That is true. I, I, do people do scan through the the projects in there because they are typically exciting? So like, oh yeah, I'd love that and you know, Pipewire or something like that. So yeah, I agree. Um, and there's also actual projects that we have that would be great for um you know an intern or a outreachy participant to work on so yeah more mentorship opportunities for us there and opportunities to reach that community too Micah so we're at about at the end of the allotted time for this meeting. Um, if there's any last minute topics you can discuss in the next 60 seconds, now's the time. Otherwise, uh, I'd like to give time for folks to take a break because we have a next another session in 10 minutes about Fedora CoreOS as a official edition. Uh, Which will also help grow our community. Um, <laughs> uh, real quick before we go, so like obviously we've talked about a lot here. Is there anything uh, that I, I know we've taken some things and said that would be really good to do? For example, actually having a focused session talking about the problems around um, Fedora's container strategy. Um, we also have talked about a million other things. Is there anything that we want to specifically take an action item? For example, we follow up with Mike and try to help out with strategy and maybe bring in a few other people um, just because I'm not a professional community person and it sounds like you guys have a lot of resources there that we haven't necessarily tapped into, right? Um, so it would be nice if we try to write down at least a few things for us to to make sure that we do as a result of this, even if it's like, oh, talk more about this specific part of it. Yeah, I can help coordinate that, Dusty. Uh, Mike and Marie are both on my team, so uh, we and we have other, you know, other people in OSPO who work on some of these specific areas. So I'll work with you to make sure we get some next next actions along those lines. Perfect. That sounds great. I'll toss it back to Micah then. Cool. All right. Um, I'm just going to close the meeting then. Uh, hit the stop and record button. Uh, thank you all for coming and participating. 
it was very valuable, I think, to everyone involved. Uh, the hard part is figuring out the next steps, I think, but uh, I think we have a better idea of the resources available for those next steps. So uh, again, thank you all for coming. We'll have another session in 10 minutes using the same URL about making Fedora Core OS a, an official Fedora edition. So uh, take a break and come back refreshed in 10 minutes if you care to join us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.